we have up next none other than Omar. Hey, how are you? I'm great, man. It's great to have you here. I know it is a uh, what a Friday afternoon for you, almost Friday night. So yeah, yeah, it's 8, 8 p.m. But yeah, it's very sunny, so it's good. But <laughs> so you can handle it, and yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time out of your Friday evening to come and talk to us. <laughs> Yeah, thanks a lot for the invitation. Excited to be here. Dude, so I'm going to kick it off to you and I'll be back in 10 minutes. I'll get this uh, this little <laughs> uh, <laughs> ad off the screen and I'll share your screen and then we're going to keep it rocking. Go ahead, man. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah, so hi, everyone. I'm Omar. Uh, I work at Hugging Face uh, as a lead of machine learning. And today I will be talking about end-to-end -end modern machine learning. So this is an extremely complex topic. It's changing very fast and there is no way that in 10 minutes I can uh, talk about everything here. So my goal today is really to increase awareness of which are the existing tools out there that can make it easier for you to use state-of-the-art uh, ML models in your products, in your services. So I will divide this talk into two parts. So in the first part, I will talk about how to do inference with these models. And then in the second part, I will talk about how to adjust these models for your own very particular use cases. Yeah, so uh, if you have been looking at Twitter this year, every few weeks there are new exciting models. Uh, here I, in this slide, I put three example, examples of popular recent models from the last few months. Uh, so StarCoder at the left is an open source community-led co-pilot replication. It's a model that can generate code uh, for many, many different programming languages. Uh, there is Llama by Meta uh, that has caused a great number of tools and research around it. Uh, so from Llama C++, uh, CPP, which is a C++ version of it, to many other applications and, and tools around it. And two weeks ago, there was Falcon. It's a very, very recent uh, model, and it's uh, right now considered the best, uh, the best open source LLM, a uh, large language model. Uh, each of these have a bit of different licenses, as you can see here. Uh, all of these are quite large, uh, and they go from a few billion parameters, so 7 billion parameters, up to 65 billion parameters in the case of Llama. Uh, so yeah, so there are many challenges on how to use these models in inference even. Uh, so the previous slide showed some common things. So for example, as I mentioned before, the models are huge. Uh, Falcon, for example, requires a lot of GPU memory. It requires 90 gigabytes of GPU memory. Uh, that means that not even uh, A100, which is considered like the, one of the best GPUs to, to use, uh, you cannot put that model in a single A100. So it makes it very hard to use as the model won't fit in a single machine. Uh, but it's not just the model size, it's also the evaluation of the large language models. Uh, there are many benchmarks right now. Uh, you can evaluate these models, but the benchmarks are not necessarily representative of real world usage or like the real world use cases in which you will put these models. Uh, and most likely most users or companies will want to adjust or tune these models for their own data, or their own use cases. And then you uh, you will expect very fast latency. Uh, so there are many uh, things that have been popping up in the ecosystem in the last couple uh, of months, the last half year. Uh, uh, so for example, there are techniques such as loading models in eight or fit uh, four bit mode uh, that allows you to use uh, less memory to load these models. Uh, so uh, for example, there are open source libraries such as bit, uh, bits and bytes or accelerate. Uh, so for example, with a four bit mode, you can load uh, the larger Falcon model uh, just with 27 gigabytes of RAM, which is still a lot, but it's much uh, less than the 90 gigabytes that I was talking before. And you can even do like some interesting things such as putting part of the computation in CPU, uh, which of course means that it will be much slower, but uh, you can use very large uh, models. Uh, then there are also tools uh, such as text generation inference that are optimized entirely for LLMs. Uh, so I would like to talk a bit more about text generation inference, which is an open source library. You can go to GitHub and find it. And there are many features that this library has, uh, but I put here like a couple of the interesting ones. Uh, so for example, tensor parallelism uh, allows you to use multiple GPUs for a, a model, for a single model. Uh, pretty much what it means is that you can split a tensor into slices and each slice will be processed in a different GPU. Uh, if you have used ChatGPT, for example, when you're talking with it, uh, chatting with it, uh, you won't generate, you you won't receive the full response. You will be receiving uh, characters at the same time or tokens. So that's called token streaming, and it's essential for fast latency. So rather than waiting for the full generation, what you want to do is to have the server just answering as soon as it starts to generate tokens. It provides a much faster UX and it's a nicer experience. 
uh, metrics, monitoring, quantization uh, with tools such as bits and bytes, which was what I, what I was mentioning before. And there are many other optimizations such as uh, uh, flash attention for fast attention mechanisms uh, and many other things. So this tool, text generation inference, is actually being used right now in a couple of different uh, places in the, op in the open source ecosystem. Uh, there is Cogin Chat, which is an open source UI, uh, like uh, ChatGPT, so an open source UI for open source LLMs. Uh, there is an effort called uh, Open Assistant, which is a, a reproduction of very large LLMs. And Nat Friedman launched a couple of weeks, uh, months ago, a uh, LLM playground. Uh, so all of these are examples that are pow powered by text generation inference. So it has been battle tested and it's again a, a fully free open source tool. So this was the part on how to use these models uh, to do inference. So a research lab, a community, shares a model to put these models in, in production. But most likely, as I was mentioning before, you will want to adjust or tune this model for your own use case. Uh, most people here are probably familiar with uh, with some of this. Uh, so in the classical ML setup, what you want to do is that you will want to train a model. You will re require lots of data, lots of compute, as well as the expertise on how to train these models. Uh, that's usually quite expensive. Uh, so in the last five, six years, many people have been doing fine tuning. Uh, fine tuning requires uh, much less data. So in fine tuning, you pick a base model, a very large model that was usually, was uh, most likely very expensive to train, shared by a research lab that has lots of compute. And then you adjust or fine tune to your own domain or data. So it can be your own company data or your own personal data. Uh, and here you need much less data, much less compute. Uh, you can train models much faster. But now with very large LLMs, uh, it's becoming very hard to just do fine tuning. And that's where PEFT or parameter efficient fine tuning is quite interesting. So it enables fun use cases such as uh, fine tuning Whisper or Falcon, the, the model I was talking before, in a free Google Colab instance, so without having to pay for expensive GPUs. So the idea of PEFT uh, in 20 seconds is that uh, rather than tuning or training the full model, you will freeze the model, you will add some adapter uh, or some additional uh, parameters, uh, and those are the ones that you, you will train. And you will have maybe a bit of a, a quality, uh, a bit of a quality hit, but even then the, the performance will be almost on par and the inference will be just as, as the same, but the training will be extremely fast. Uh, so I will talk about two, three quick examples about uh, PEFT. Uh, so for example, there's Whisper. Uh, Whisper is an automatic speech recognition model. Uh, that means that it can transcribe audio files to text. Uh, and fine tuning Whisper, uh, it usually in a Google code app would crash your memory. Uh, you will get an out of memory. Uh, but with LoRa, uh, LoRa is a parameter efficient uh, technique. It's a PEFT technique. You can just add a small adapter, uh, which will be much smaller than the original model. And it will enable much, much faster training with similar quality and without uh, requiring, requiring having like extremely large additional models. Uh, PEFT can also be used for things such as a stable diffusion. So for example, uh, so stable diffusion, if you don't know, is a image generation model uh, and you can have different adapters for different uh, concepts, for example. But in the context of LLMs, uh, PEFT enables things such as fine tuning uh, Falcon, even if you don't have that much compute power. Uh, and there was a very recent technique uh, from uh, about a month ago called uh, QLoRa. Uh, QLoRa allows you to, uh, to uh, fine tune a model uh, with four bit quantization and adapter tuning. Uh, that means that, uh, so uh, long story short, it allows you to require much less memory uh, to train models. Uh, and that enables very interesting things. So for example, in the context of RLHF, uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback, which was the previous presentation. What you can do is have a single base model and then have multiple adapters. So for example, for the preference model, you will have a different adapter. And for each of the components, you will have different adapters, but you will always keep a single base model. Uh, this is a very recent area. This is just from the last couple of uh, weeks, months, uh, but this enables some very interesting things. Uh, so yeah, uh, so again, what I wanted to do today was just give a very high level overview of what's the current uh, state uh, of the ecosystem. And I hope this was useful. Uh, everything is in GitHub, everything is open source. So feel free to check it out. Feel free to give some stars. Thanks. Excellent. Incredible. OR, thank you. Yeah, thanks and so much. 
I get the feeling I'm listening to your accent right now, and I get the feeling you're from some Spanish-speaking country, maybe. Yeah, so I'm from Peru originally, and I grew up in Mexico. Uh, yeah. Ah, muy bien. All right, <laughs> there we go, man. So, if anyone wants to continue the conversation with Omar, throw it in the chat, and he will cruise on over there. Thank you so much, Omar. This is awesome, man. I really appreciate you coming on here and joining us. Yeah, thanks a lot for the invitation. Thanks, everyone. See ya.